I'm Rob Lukuri, a senior editor at Gold Derby, here with your Jamie Mastandrea, who stars in From Scratch, the huge Netflix hit limited series that everyone is um, crying over and laughing over um, around the world. Eugenio, I love this. I love how you portray Lino, who falls in love with Amy, played by Zoe Saldana. And Lino is based on author and co-creator Tembi Locke's late husband, um, Sardo Gullo. And I was just wondering, yeah. did you want to bring his spirit into your portrayal or did you just decide to create Lino from your own experience and interpretation of what the script provided you? Well, thank you. This is a um, <clears throat> very, very, very nice question. Um, uh, I, I didn't know Saro before, and I got to know him reading the book first, because I first read the book and then I read the script. Yeah. Uh, or, yeah, yeah the, 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 the reading of the two went very, um, almost at the same time. But yeah, I didn't know Saro before, so I got to know him reading the book. And and um, when Tembi shared memories and and uh, suggestions with me, so I, I I I have I have seen very few pictures of Saro because um, I wanted to uh, be loyal and faithful to Tembi's story and portray the um, uh, character that she wanted. Um, to be portrayed on screen to tell her story and her dead husband's story. But at the same time, I didn't want to have too many uh, elements that connected me to the real character. Mm. Because, of course, I was portraying Lino. So there's not there's Of course, there's um, uh, an inevitable difference between Eugenio and Saro. So trying to do another Saro would be strange and, and I, I think it wouldn't be what Tambi wanted and what Attica wanted. So so yeah, I, I took what I could from Saro and from things that people told me about Saro and his life and his experience. But I also built it up myself because we are portraying Lino and not Saro and it wouldn't and it allows you yeah. to bring something of yourself to the role and give it some authenticity. And but of I still course, wonder, of course, definitely. Yeah. And it's it's a I mean, it's a really beautiful story, a beautiful portrayal by you. Um, and I recall when um showrunner Artika Locke um shared with me that creating the series really resonated with her personally. And there were many days where she would be crying in her trailer because of the profoundly emotional story that you were all telling about her and her sister's mm -hmm. life and their family. And I just wonder, did that ever really, did you notice a lot of the emotion on set when you and Zoe were, were doing a scene and you would see the sisters watching you with tears in their eyes? Absolutely. There was so, so much emotion running uh, and flowing on our set because we were portraying a real story and the real characters of the story were there. And, and it was something that touched everyone from as actors to the crew, to anyone working on, on, on set. And absolutely, yeah, there were so many times that uh, we, we, we actually did things and, and said things that uh, have really happened and that were really told in real life. And so, yeah, absolutely, it was so much, so much, so much emotion. Um, so much emotion running uh, on our set. And, and uh, being Tembi, an actor, um, she brought in the project uh, actors and colleagues that have met Saro. And so, and so I got to know a lot of people that looked at me and, and, and you know, they were considering me like, okay, you're the one that's portraying Saro. Okay, let me see who you are. Let me understand <laughs> who. Okay, no, so I was there like, yeah, it's me. <laughs> yeah. And so one, it, yeah. it was really, I met, I met a lot of people that knew Saro and, and it was a big responsibility. And every, each and every time that I met someone that came to me said, um, nice to meet you. I met Saro. I knew Saro. It was, um, I, my sense of responsibility went one, um, you know, one step up. I said, okay, I have more responsibility then. I have more and more. Yeah. Wow. It was, it was, it was strong. It was strong. I can imagine. It, yeah, there's a, lot, a bit of pressure there to make sure that you're doing him justice. And of course, 
you want to give give your best performance regardless. Um, you know, you're an established actor in Italy as in theater and TV, film, and so forth. Um, do you recall the moment that you were cast on this? It's a big American Netflix production. It's going to obviously really elevate your career. A lot of a lot more people around the world are going to know who you are. What was going through your mind when you finally got the role? Because I I know that it was a big process to find the right person. So for you to get the yeah. role, you must have really killed your audition. <clears throat> yeah, no, I was, I was, I was really excited. And the very first time I read the script, um, to be honest, I, I, I didn't think this is this is gonna be my role. But I, when I read the the audition uh, scenes, I had a feeling, and I said, okay, this is something I can do. I mean, this is something that. I can bring in, I have things to bring in with this character. And so I was kind of serene while auditioning. I did, I, I did several, several auditions. And then when I got the, when I got the amazing news, yeah, I was um, as if someone punched me. So I was kind of trying to, yeah, figure out what was, what was happening. First, first person I call saying, I got the role is my grandma. And and she was very, she was very happy. She said, "Don't be afraid." Wow. And yeah, I know as an as an Italian background myself, uh, my nonna would be. Oh, you are. First, yeah, my nonna would be one of the first people that I would call as well. So I totally get that. And then she would make a <laughs> pot of polpetti, and we would eat them together. But that's a whole other story. Um, <laughs> you know what's really fascinating about from scratch is that it starts. <laughs> On this whimsical enchanting note because we're immersed in Florence the sets the costumes the food the cinematography breathtaking as usual what are your thoughts on how Italy is often portrayed in American pop culture as this gorgeous romanticized version of La Dolce Vita mm -hmm. uh, nice question this one too thank you um when you act, uh, everything you portray on screen or on stage is always an abstraction of what happens in real life. And uh, I don't know if this word makes sense in English. In Italian, is stilizzazione, mm. st st um, which means uh, trying to uh, portray something, describing and bringing the general lines and the most... Uh, visible things that really uh, catch your attention. So that's what I think happens with uh, Italy being portrayed by foreigners, whether they are American, English, German. Um, I understand that there, uh, there is a um, 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 common uh, idea of and, and general idea of things that uh, may happen in Italy and, and things that, that commonly happen. And, and of course, we have to remember that this story is a story of an American, of a Black American girl, and then a Black American woman. So the story is seen on her point of view. So of course, it's the point of view of an American on what's happening in Italy. And for sure, um, I mean, some things are... Um, um, I don't know how to say that word in English. Like stereotypical um, or like um, surface. I know what you're saying, and yeah. I mean, no, that's... I wouldn't say. I wouldn't say. I wouldn't say. I wouldn't say stereotype is something. Is something uh, more delicate and subtle, and the difference is is very subtle. And 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 uh, and I wouldn't say generalize. I wouldn't. I wouldn't say uh, stereo, um, uh, st stereotyp stereotypized or or, yeah. or generalized. It's, it's it's very it's very subtle the difference. But I, but I get what you mean. Um, it's putting it's it's putting together things that that in the mind of the people commonly happen, and and it's uh, it's how they portray us. And for sure, be sure that if Italy does a movie on what happens in America, it's going to be the same way too. I mean, it's our point of view. So of course, has some, it, oh, when, when a nation sees how they are portrayed by another nation, of course, they will always find something that they're going to say, but we're not like that, but yeah. we don't do that, but That's we right. don't do exactly that. <laughs> yeah. So, but it's... so I, I get, I, 
I get what you mean. I guess it's the it's the point of view of of, of Americans, what they see, and it's yeah. what it's it's TV story, and it's what she saw, and and so we had to say that we had to tell the, that story and say those things. Yeah, and I think that makes a lot of sense. It's just like you know, in Australia, there are not kangaroos flying around the street, but that might be in a show that you might see on Netflix. Anyway, <laughs> what exactly? What's fascinating is. And I didn't know anything about this going in. I watched it with my wife and we just loved it, right? This is a Sicilian story as well, which is even more exciting. I I come from a Sicilian family. I was amazed, amazed how authentic and real Sicilian culture was portrayed in the show. The language, the family dynamic, very authentic to me. (laughs) And I looked you up because I thought you were Sicilian. I didn't realise you were Romano. And so, and no, no. Let me about that. About that. Let me say that that um, it, the show, our show, is really, really faithful, and to a lot of um, Italian and Sicilian traditions. Because Tambi knows them. They, they, they were very faithful to Italian traditions and and behaviors, and they were open to let us um, uh, to let us bring in suggestions and notes. And saying this may happen, this 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 may not, um, and so and so the I think the show is really faithful to Italian and Sicilian tradition and language. Uh, Paride and Lucia they speak an amazing, antique, elegant Sicilian. Yeah. Uh, and so yeah, I think quite the contrary is very faithful. Yeah, and I felt like I was on this on this on this point of view on this point of view is absolutely absolutely faithful and and thank yeah. to them, uh, Sicilian language is is being heard these days in in every corner of the world. So it's isn't it great? It's proud. It's amazing. Every time I heard Picciaridi, I felt like I was at home. Um, so yeah, and so speaking of Paride, Paride Benesse, who plays um, Giacomo, the father, um, I really. That I found that relationship to be one of the most compelling in the whole show because it resonates personally with a lot of people from that part of the world that may have difficult relationships with their parents, uh, particularly someone like Lino who leaves and doesn't do what his father wants him to do. What was it like to work alongside Paride and, and, and to develop that really emotional relationship between the two men? Uh Thank you for this question too. Um, um, uh, Party days become my family forever. Uh, we are uh, we are more than friends, more than family. We're just um, uh, the two the souls of Austria connected in an amazing um, amazing way. When we're together, I have sixty six and he's twenty nine. So um, we 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 really love each other. It's party day has been fundamental. In my um, in my experience of from scratch, he taught me Sicilian. Um, he was a great teacher because Paddy de knows um, he's a he's a, um, he's a he has a high knowledge of Sicilian language, so, so he knows all, all the um, all the layers of the language that 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 were built up in the centuries. He taught me Sicilian. He was a great, amazing colleague on stage. He was. He's a he's a theater actor, and he spent all his he spent all his life in theater. So he has a presence. He has an aura, charisma that you, when when you are on stage with party, that you really have to fight your scene. Um, whatever whatever, um, the more our characters were fighting um, in fiction and in the scenes that we were act, playing, the more the two of us were connecting in uh, uh, in real life and spending evenings and and nights talking about characters and and figuring out how we may do that scene, how we may do the other one. Um, Party Days brought um, spiritual revolution in my life. Wow! And I owe a lot to him. Yeah, That's he did. Cool. He did. Yeah, he made me. He made me discover. Um, he made me discover a lot of um, things spiritually and in the perception and conceiving of my craft and my role as an actor. I owe him a lot. I think he, he I always say that in my life, there's before Paride Benassai and after Paride Benassai. 
Wow. And now we are enjoying the post party de Benesse era. Oh, yeah, you are. <laughs> and I think I've never I've never seen him before. And now I desperately want to see everything that he's in. But that's in a whole other. That's another mm-hmm. Um, We should talk about Zoe Sardinia because I've, I think this is her best work ever. I think she should win every award. Um, beautiful raw performance from her. And I, I just want to know from you, you got to work so closely. What did you most value about working with her and developing the bond between Amy and Lino? Uh, working uh, with Zoe has been an incredible, amazing, uh, nourishing experience. She's an amazing actress. Uh, I was stunned by her performance. She brought so much life and light and, and love to the character she did that I was, I was amazed. I mean, uh, it was great, great. It was challenging, but in a, in a positive uh, way. And, and I, I, learned, I learned so much from her, looking at her working and, and building the character and her character and doing her everyday craft on set. It's, it's been amazing. And I've been told by a lot of people that this is that that that's been um, uh, have been Zoe fans for for years. Yeah. That after they saw from scratch, they said so far this is her best, amazing work she ever she ever Absolutely. did. I think she she did. She has, uh, um, yeah. In some, she really deserves any <laughs> any award. She did amazing. Yeah, absolutely. She did. But I must say, um, Eugenio, your performance as Lino was very affecting. Um, to play a man who seems to have it all and then is told that he's going to die and just to see him lose it all and fade away, that's really profound mm-hmm. to watch and experience. And I imagine it would be 10 times more to play that. And I wondered how much has that affected you personally playing this story and then seeing the reaction on social media. Everybody says that this show makes them cry. So how do you feel about that? Yeah. Uh, well, well, once again, I would have never pictured uh, me saying that, but I'm quite happy that people cried because it means that we, 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 we succeeded in delivering the story. But you know, um, Lino and Saro, uh, they have been uh, the main um, thought I've been having for a long while, for a year and a half, because we first shot the movie, uh, then I dubbed the Italian uh, version. And so I've been I've been doing Lino again and again for a very long time, and and it's been uh, it's been it's been a lot of things. It's been very uh, hard. It's been a, an amazing journey, and I owe I owe Lino and and the character and the story and this experience a lot. Uh, it's been it's been tough. I mean the 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 the, the sickness part. Uh, it's been tough. Once Lucia Sardo told me. Uh, I was feeling sad. We were in LA. I was feeling sad. I, 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 you know, when 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 you don't really know what's happening with you, you're sad. You don't want to do things. And Lucia came to me and said, "Honey, you're portraying a person that's dying from cancer. Remember that uh, your mind knows that you are acting, but your body doesn't. And so your body is reacting is 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 reacting like a, a cancer cancer patient." And so in my in my body, it's been it's been very difficult portraying uh, portraying Lino. I ended the production and I was uh, physically um, um, provato. How do you say that? Um, um, so, um, like spent, uh, uh, exhausted. Um, yeah, physically exhausted. Exactly, yeah, exhausted, yeah. exhausted. It's but amazing. spiritually, it's been an amazing journey. Lino, Lino, Lino is the character that allowed me to play uh, the releasing of every bond and image and connection and surfing uh what 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 hap- what's what, what's just happening it's no projections in the future it's it what happened to him is something so strong so big so um uh compelling that you have to you cannot project yourself in the future you have to leave it now yeah and it, and it, for every moment because it could be gone. Um, on that note, thank you so much, Eugenio, for a beautiful performance and your time today. And uh, I hope to see more thank of you, you on, on my TV and on my film screen. 
<laughs> Thank you. Thank you so much for having me. Thank you.